John F. Kennedy, The New Frontier President is the name of the book. It's published by Nova Publishers and Professor David Sneed, Chair of the History Department at Liberty University, is the author. Dr. Sneed, let's start by talking about what is this series uh, of books? This is a series that uh, Nova Publishing started to do about six years ago. Um, they did contracts a little before that, but the idea was to get a series on the presidents that um, the general reader, students in college, or even advanced high school students could turn to to get basic information on the presidents of the United States. Now, why are you writing about John F. Kennedy? Well, it started with uh, really my dissertation, which became a, a book. I focused on the Eisenhower presidency, but it crossed over into the Kennedy years. And so I got a taste of Kennedy uh, in the late 1990s. And so that kind of set my interest to, to find out a little bit more about him. And then when this series came out and they needed authors and they asked me if I would be willing to do the Kennedy book, and I said, sure, I do not, don't know a whole lot about him at this stage other than you know, what I'd read, but it would be a neat challenge and would be a good follow-up to what I'd done on Eisenhower. And it proved more challenging than I thought it would be, but Why? I enjoyed it immensely. Uh, he's very different from Eisenhower. Eisenhower was much older, different generation. Eisenhower had been, you know, the five-star general in World War II, uh, born in the 19th century, uh, Kennedy much younger um, by about three decades, and obviously different perspective, different levels of energy, uh, uh, different political views, and so it, it, that posed a challenge. And, and Kennedy was different from Eisenhower in um, some of his actions. Uh, Eisenhower was generally faithful to his wife. Kennedy hadn't been, so I knew that would be a challenge in trying to address that in the book. How, how do you address it? Uh, I, I want students and, and the general public to understand that uh, he was flawed like anybody else. Um, he, unfortunately, uh, did engage in affairs uh, throughout his presidency, and those did undermine some of his um, policies to a degree. Um, but I don't want to give too much attention to it because that was his private life, and it, it really was between him and Jacqueline Kennedy. Um, but it's also something that shouldn't be ignored. Um, but I did want to focus most of the book on you know, wh what were his decisions and why did he make the decisions he made. What is one decision that you talk about in here that you think was consequential to his presidency? Well, one of my criticisms of him, and it led to uh, a new policy, is he spoke about civil rights in the 1960 campaign as, as if he would be the representative for black America. And he won the overwhelming um, black vote in that uh, election. But he didn't do much once he was president. Um, he really was, uh, as one historian has called it, a bystander. He, he, he made a commitment but then did not. That does change, though, um, in 1963 when he witnessed through the newspapers and new television at the time the um, Birmingham uh, riots and protests and Police Chief Connor and the, 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 the dogs and fire hoses um, disrupting the protesters. And he was really horrified by that. And I, I really think that's when he truly understood or began to understand that civil rights is something we need to, to, to do something about. And soon after that, in June of 1963, he spoke out very eloquently against um, the segregation in the South and the need for additional civil rights legislation. And that ultimately led to the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and to a lesser extent to the Voting Rights Act of 65. His three years in the presidency, were they successful? I would say overall. Um, he did not achieve everything he set out to do. I think at times he was more interested in getting reelected in 64 than he was in pushing for issues. Um, I think he learned as a president, which I give him credit for. Um, his first year in office, he really struggled in some foreign policy issues, uh, in particular like with the Berlin crisis that summer. He had a summit meeting with uh, Khrushchev in Vienna that did not go well, which he admitted to. Um, but he grew. He learned. Uh, he learned to be more calculated, to, I, I would say, think more before he spoke. Um, he had a tendency to use rhetoric that was almost inflammatory. Um, 
uh, to go back to early in his, camp, in his presidency in 1961, uh, when the Berlin crisis was going on, he talked about the need to build fallout shelters. Well, that caused a real stir, and not a panic in the country, but it raised levels of fear, both in the United States and the Soviet Union, that maybe um, this nuclear war might, might occur. Whereas, when we get to the Cuban Missile Crisis, he's much more restrained in how he handled that crisis. Obviously, a lot of it was done behind the scenes, um, but he tried to keep the rhetoric cooler and tried to work for, through it for a diplomatic solution behind the scenes. Professor Sneed, what's the new frontier part of this? Why do you call him a new well, frontier? Well, the new president? frontier, he wanted to do have a new frontier. That was his campaign promise. Um, basically, a new direction uh, for the country. He believed the Eisenhower administration, the Republican policies of the 50s had grown stale and that the country wasn't doing enough to show its greatness. He wanted to see growth economically that the country had not experienced for a while. The 50s had been pretty steady economic growth, but not to the levels he thought were needed. He thought the U.S. should be doing more in science. Um, I would probably say the thing the New Frontier gets connected to the most um, is the space program and the desire for the, the United States to take a lead there. You know, he had it as his goal and stated it up front. We want to put a man on the moon uh, by the end of the decade and, and put a lot of resources into that. Um, but it's basically being different and new and um, having hope for the future and trying to challenge the country to have hope for the future in a better world. What do you teach here at Liberty? I teach a variety of courses, but primarily um, U.S. military and diplomatic history, which is my special field, 20th century uh, primarily. Uh, I do a Cold War course occasionally, and I've done a course in Kennedy, as would be expected. Uh, modern U.S. principally is my area of expertise, so those are the courses that I teach. I still also do the U.S. survey, which I enjoy immensely because you get to really introduce history to uh, students who um, have varying backgrounds in history. And how long have you been at Liberty? Where else have you taught? I fin I'm finishing my eighth year here, and before that I taught five years at Texas Tech University in Lubbock, and, uh, and came here in part to help them start a graduate program, and since then that's gotten started, and then to become chair of the department. We have been talking with David Sneed, chair of the history department at Liberty University and the author of this book, John F. Kennedy, The New Frontier President. NovaPublishers.com is the website, in case you're interested.